All right. Um, bunch of changes here this week as I've uh, been prepping to remove all the middle structure for our habitat build. Um, one of the things that obviously had to go was the uh, coolant overflow uh, or expansion tank um, that was set up here on the mid structure. Uh, the, uh, so I removed it and all of the plumbing uh, associated with it that ran back along the side of the engine and up to around to the front. Um, the oil line, the oil feed pipe is also missing, you might notice. Um, it had to go as well. And in playing around with that, I looked at the, uh, it used to come down, the, the pipe used to come in on the, on the framework, and then there was a hose, and then there's another uh, long elbow into a flange on the side of the engine. And what I got the idea to do was to cut up the old feed pipe and use the feed pipe and the filler port and I just welded it into the uh, the existing flange once I cleaned out the uh, the old elbow that pointed to the rear and went into the to the large black hose. Uh, I think that worked out pretty good as a as an oil fill. Uh, I almost messed up. I almost uh, I almost tilted this out too far. There's about an inch of clearance between here and the edge of the uh, of the the uh, hump that comes down when the cab closes. So I've only about an inch of clearance right here. Um, what else did I do on this side? Yeah, that's about it on this side. Rerouted the oil and uh, removed all of the uh, all of the plumbing. There were two hoses up top by the um, up here by they ran behind the uh, uh, throttle position sensor. <laughs> wow, blanked on that one. Um, and then of course the large blue line that used to run right across through uh, right across through this middle area here. Uh, which was the uh, coolant return line from the expansion tank. All right, let's go around to the other side of the engine, and I'll show you what I did over there and explain some things. Over here on the passenger side, and while I had the coolant system drained, I put in my 1500-watt uh, coolant heater and the freeze plug underneath the turbocharger, so no more cold starts. Woohoo! Yeah. Also, while I had it apart to, uh, to reconfigure the cooling system to get rid of that uh, tank where it's located, um, I also took it upon myself to uh, return the CAT engine back to its original cooling system design. On the LMTV, in the coolant housing here, uh, they used a modified coolant housing with an elbow that sticks out to the front, connects to a big stainless pipe that runs across the engine and down to the heat exchanger. Um, normally the coolant comes out through the out through the side of the head, goes up through uh, up through this housing, um, and then either goes down through a bypass pipe and down through that chunk of hose there, or if it's warm enough to heat up the thermostat, the thermostat opens and it goes out to the radiator. Um, in the A0 LMTV, they ran all that warm coolant down to your heat exchanger for your transmission and you've got several thousand pounds of steel and aluminum that make a great heat sink and they just suck up all the heat from the engine so the engine never gets to operating temperature. Um, running diesels cold is really not good for them. Uh, the way CAT originally designed it is how you see it plumbed with that chunk of hose coming out of the bottom of the thermostat housing and right into a port on the top of the water pump. Uh, from there it goes right back through the engine and then the coolant just keeps recirculating through the engine and gets warmer and warmer and warmer until it gets warm enough to open up the thermostat and start sending some of the coolant to the radiator to be cooled. I think the reasoning behind the diverting it down to the transmission cooler was so that you, if you were four-wheeling really hard in really, really cold conditions, in theory you could possibly overheat the transmission because there wouldn't be any flow through that heat exchanger because the thermostat would be closed. Or if there was flow, it'd be very little, only as much as the, only as much as the thermostat would just squirt a little bit out to keep, uh, keep the engine at operating temperature when it's really cold outside. The, uh, by putting it back this way, um, I think the engine's gonna be a whole lot happier. I also modified the uh, the way the, the heater is fed. Uh, this curved stainless pipe here 
um, comes off of the thermostat housing and goes to your heater through this blue hose. The normal configuration, um, the return line from the heater would come back and would go to this port right here. Uh, well, I plugged this port and I pulled the line back around the front of the radiator and ran it down the driver's side of the radiator. And I took the fitting that was in this port and the hose assembly, um, or the pipe assembly, the stainless pipe assembly that mates to the hose. Um, I took it, I machined up a little adapter and welded it all together and put it down here in the port where the bypass coolant used to go over there on the far side. You can see the, the return line from the heater. So uh, I can still put flow through the, uh, through the heat exchanger. Uh, if it's really cold outside, I'm probably going to have the heater on. So um, there'll, be, uh, there'll be heater return flowing through that. So there, there'll be a little bit of flow, a uh, fair amount of flow through the heat exchanger to pull any heat from the transmission generates up into the up into the engine so it can add to the overall heat, open up the thermostat and dispose of that heat through the radiator. Um, in making this change back to the original uh, configuration, uh, one of the problems I ran into was the way they had modified the LMTV water pump. The uh, this return part is where that bypass coolant comes into, back into the pump and, and gets sent back through the engine. Uh, this is normally about an inch longer, so they, they took an inch off of this and put a freeze plug in it. There wasn't enough of a pipe left to clamp that hose onto, so I didn't feel comfortable with that. Uh, mine was also leaking. It's starting to weep out of the weep hole underneath the, uh, underneath the pulley, so it was time for it to go. Um, there are two basic types of water pumps. For the 3116, uh, one of them has just one port here and the other one has two ports. Uh, this is the return port from the expansion tank. And since I was deleting that, I didn't need that port. So the, uh, the replacement pump that I sourced um, only has one port in the top. And that's used as the return line from the air compressor coolant. So that's about it for this set of changes. I'm ready to put the upper radiator pipe back in and fill it up and go to town, I guess. <laughs>